half thousand RPM and V8s. But then the M3 does seem to go against traffic a bit. I mean, from such a quiet saloon car, you wouldn't expect such savagery. We go play it in. Why down the turn of the ghost here? See, now you can see make me make my same mistakes again. The M3 grips for none. There's not really a lot of understeer, which you would expect from such a heavy car. It's balance and it's fantastic and it's by far. The best looking BMW because BMW is uh, really the prettiest car in the world. I'm not saying this is good looking either, I think it's not good looking at all. Those grooves and those that carbon fiber roof. And the fat body and so on. That gets me on to the drawbacks of this M3. The old M3s were nicer to drive because they simply were a bit more sport, sporty pretender. They were less cocky, less of a big, expensive German saloon, and more of a Sports car. It might be good handling and so on, but you do feel the weight, which is another drawback. And while the biggest problem is that we won't be able to be seen in this. That said, though, on a private track. Or on a road on which it can't be seen, a mountain road perhaps, or a highway, or a town, it will handle all. Really, the M3 can really do anything. I mean, most of the drawbacks aren't so bad to, well, not be cured by the driving. And yet, the biggest problems are the ones that it doesn't really have. The BMW image. Do not want to be seen in it. It doesn't really deserve it. And yet, it has it. Horrible truth for a great car.